So um, I, I got an email a couple days before this uh, from somebody who said, oh, this is weird to talk in the middle of this yurt. This is a weird sound thing. Um, it sounds great. <laughs> you don't know it, but it sounds really weird to talk to you. Well, maybe you do. Um, so, uh, do you want to introduce yourself? Oh, sure. I'm Tom Kay with the Institute for Applied Ecology. And, but I, when I'm talking about somebody else's work. And so if you have questions about this, I have no idea if I'm going to ask them. But uh, the point is, somebody sent, and this woman named uh, Cheryl Powell sent an email a couple days ago saying she's working on um, some habitat suitability maps for gorse and other species, uh, as well as climate change scenario um, uh, extrapolations into the future for gorse. And she wanted some feedback on it. And I said, well, happy to be going to this gorse meeting. Is it okay if I just show it to people there? So we've got this gorse brain trust. And, and the main, the, the first question is, uh, does this map, which first shows um, black dots are where gorse is, is uh, currently known, uh, and then the shaded area that's orange, and the, the darker the shading is, the, the better the habitat. Does that match people's expectations or, or thoughts about the reality for gorse, especially the, this extrapolation of, of where gorse habitat uh, is likely to be and where it's not likely to be? Because that it becomes the basis for a model to look at what might happen with climate change. So if this base map is wrong, then the climate change models will be wrong also. Um, they might just be wrong anyway. But um, So the question to this group is, does this map sort of make sense? Does it jive with your experience and your understanding of course, ecology and habitat? We talked about this a little bit on break, but you said you didn't know anything much about this map, so maybe you don't know this, but what variables did she use to determine what suitable you I don't know. <laughs> uh, and, and, you know, I've got this email that says, you know, uh, we use environmental variables. Oh, all right. Um, sure you did. Uh, so I, I, don't, I don't know what variable. I've seen people do these things. kinds of things with other species in different places, and they usually use things that are available on for GIS layers. Sure. So they'll use elevation, aspect, rainfall, temperature ranges, those right. kinds of things. But I don't know what she did. Yeah, I, I think in this case it'll include those things in also emphasize, because of the climate change aspect, um, those that are climatic variables. So temperature, rainfall, solar gain. Right. Isn't that the same map that the OSU, OSU uh, Extension Service that we've got handed out? It may have the same base data the same for the dots. black dots. It has the same dots, yeah. but not the other. But the, this, uh, the, 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 the coloration. The yeah, coloration is the same. So, I think the dots are from the wheat mapper database. Yeah, probably. The the same base source. So the dots represent infestation? Yeah. yeah. Plant spines are infestation. Okay, yeah, there's that one dot that's in Deschutes County that came in with the email that went to a few different people, and that's been debunked. That's not, that's wrong. <laughs> the dot in the middle, there is no gorse there. But the dots up in Clackamas County are real, um, and, but they appear to not be rapidly spread, spreading populations. Um, to do some restoration to create canopy over them, and, and they're, not, they're not doing well. So, uh, if you want, uh, I can show you what some of the, the climate change. Just uh, to add something, a lot of those inland areas are probably uh, traced back to contaminated equipment, yeah. logging yeah. equipment coming from the coast mm -hmm. inland to work in those forested areas. So you had a super saturation of inoculation of those areas. We don't see it reproducing well in those upper areas, but in some of the lower areas inland, they are. Yeah. So uh, if you were to look at this map and think how it might be modified, um, is there, would you suggest something based on that experience? Well, just some of those trailers that go up into the Cascades may not be as important, but... You know, I would say the Coast Range area that's all excluded, that would be included. There is always... They may not be recorded, but private timber companies are telling me I found a gorse plant in the coast range, da, da, da. so they get yeah. rid of it. So that's a habitat that's very suitable for gorse. Like especially uh, like in sort of the central Washington North coast. County, Polk yeah. County, um, those counties. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's good feedback. So it, just, uh, it might be interesting to look at um, what the climate change scenarios look like because they're not, they don't agree. There's three different climate change models that they're 
driving a scenario from. And so this one's the CCCMA model. Um, and you can see 50 years at 2050, now 38 years in the future. Is that right? Um, uh, the, the North Coast looks like not so great habitat. In fact, uh, it looks like it's more moving into the Willamette Valley for, for Oregon. Um, but if you look at a different climate change scenario, let's do this, this is a real one. Um, it's, this is more, this is kind of like the worst case scenario, but still not a lot on the North Coast. So there's this movement away from that habitat being appropriate. Do we, do we, does that seem right? I mean, it all depends on what happens with climate change, I know. And so um, that's in the future. But uh, that's It freezes back a lot up in the north part of the state. It still survives, but it, doesn't, it isn't as invasive. Yeah. And there's just so much other competition up in there, too. Here's the Hadley model, um, which is much less um, alarming. So uh, I think what, you know, these are draft models, and, and these aren't for general, they're not trying to confirm anything here. They're just trying to say, if you take these models and extrapolate what we've got, there's some pretty different futures that are possible uh, for Morse in Oregon, just based on climate variables. Uh, and there's not widespread agreement among these models, which is, is pretty interesting. Um, so I think there's a lot of uncertainty for this species and, and what, how its habitat might change. Uh, but uh, I, how, how about this? I'll, uh, I'll send this to Sherry, and she can send it to everybody. And if you have comments that you want to give back to uh, Cynthia, you can just email her directly. That way I don't have to be the middleman. Mm -hmm. Is that good? Because I, I didn't do this. Um, yeah, it's a very it's a very interesting concept. Also, you know, if we look at removing the climate change concept and thinking about how gorse is going to spread through the state in general, you really need to integrate it with land use as well. You know, make yeah. It fine tune it. Yeah, I don't know that they have the ability to do that in this mm -hmm. project, but um, that's that's something to tell her. All right. So I don't need to be more Thanks, everybody.